The goal of this video is to examine a very special differential equation that shows up all over the place in physics, chemistry, biology. It's the natural growth equation. It could also be referred to as the natural decay equation since growth and decay problems are essentially one and the same. There's a tiny subtlety we want to examine carefully in the solution. It's not hard, but um, it is worth really understanding what's going on. So we'll take a simple example. dy dx equals 2y. The rate of change of y is proportional, with proportionality constant 2, to the value y. We can separate variables quite easily and integrate. And here's the first subtle point. The antiderivative of 1 over y is ln of absolute value of y. You really don't want to lose the absolute value sign there. And that's going to have consequences that ripple through. So ln of absolute value of y in this case is equal to 2x plus a constant of integration, which could be any real number. Absolute value of y is therefore e to the 2x plus k. And we can apply the law of uh, exponents to rewrite that as e to the 2x times e to the k on the right side. So what we'll do is we will go to the top here and let a equal e to the k. So we're going to give a new name to this constant. And so we can take that e to the k and rewrite the formula with an a in front instead of e to the k. Now the thing to notice is k could have been any real number. But when you exponentiate k, you're going to get a positive number. So this new constant a that we're writing really has to be positive. And that actually makes sense since the left side is the absolute value of y. The right side can't be negative. y, then, is plus or minus this quantity. And we're still declaring a to be greater than 0, which is a little bit silly because what we could do is just say, look, let a be anything except 0. So what about a equals 0? What's so bad about that? There's nothing we've done that allows for a to be 0 at this point. But we will notice that y equals 0 is a solution of the differential equation. Because if y is 0, on the one hand, dy dx is equal to 0, obviously. On the other hand, 2y is obviously also equal to 0. Therefore, the differential equation is satisfied. y equals 0 is a solution. And the way you can get y equals 0 from the line on the pre you know, the formula on the previous line is to let a be 0. So actually, we don't need to put any restriction on a in the end. And our general solution is y equals a e to the 2x. a could be any real number. So when we plot all the solutions, you get a nice foliation. And you can see the, the way this calculation was organized. There are the cases where a is positive. There are the cases where a is negative. And then there's this singular case in the middle where a is 0. And so your family of solutions sort of breaks down in this regard. You'll notice that the constant 2 of proportionality to the differential equation means that the solutions on the top half of the curve of, of the graph, excuse me, are increasing, whereas the functions on the bottom half of the graph are actually decreasing. So you want to be careful about what you say when you say, well, the constant's positive, so all your solutions are increasing. Well, that's true for the ones that lie above the x-axis, but below the x-axis, they're actually decreasing. So let's look at the general equation, dp dt equals kp. Separation of variables is not hard. Integration gives you ln of absolute value of p. Let the wheels of algebra turn, and we've got this general solution, the analog of what we just worked with in the simple example. Now, an observation is in order here. When t equals 0, you can plug 0 in for t, and p winds up being precisely that constant a, which we have out front. And that's such a nondescriptive term, uh, name for this constant a. So let's propose a different name for it. Let's call it p sub 0, or what we might say is p naught. And the reason we're going to use this symbol is it, it's a mnemonic device for remembering that we're, we're, what we're talking about is the value of p when t equals 0. So instead of a, let's use p naught. And then our general solution becomes p of t equals p naught e to the kt. And remember, 
the role that p naught plays is actually the y-intercept of your solution. This can be very handy when you're solving initial value problems because you recognize what that constant really means. So in this example, there are 2,000 birds on an island at time t equals 0, and the population p satisfies dp dt equals 0.03p. We want to find a formula for p of t. Well, the statement of the problem allows us to realize that the constant k is 0.03, and we're flat out told that the initial population is 2,000. And so we can just use the template for the solution, and that's our solution. End of story. So when we actually have the initial value of a population or an amount in one of these kinds of natural growth problems, the solution is really quite simple. In this second problem, we'll see a, an example of decay. So let A of T denote the amount of radioactive material present in a lab. We're going to measure, measure T in days and A in grams. Suppose you know that A is 2.9 after three days. And you also know that the amount obeys the differential equation dA dt equals negative 0.872a. So we're meant to find a formula for a. So the first observation is k is less than 0. And assuming, of course, that the amount is positive, as we saw in the uh, graph a few slides ago, all your solutions are going to be decreasing, assuming that your amounts are positive, which, of course, they will be. So first version of the solution we can just write out the template. Unfortunately, we don't know what the initial amount was. So we might have to work backwards to figure this out. We know that a of 3 is 2.9, and then we can solve for a naught and find out that the original amount was about 39.7. So our solution might look like this. We know that it's 39.7 e to the negative 0.872 t, decreasing function, and when you get out to t equals 3, you've dropped to 2.9 grams. So this graph's obviously not to scale, but does a good job of indicating what we're dealing with. But let's look at a second solution. That may have been a little too much work if you really just want to get your hands on a formula that works. So the claim is that this formula just works. And how should we interpret what's going on here? We'll notice that a winds up equaling 2.9 in this formula precisely when t equals 3. Well, that was the condition we were told. And you can do a little algebra. Simple algebra will tell you that dA dt is still equal to negative 0.872 times A. In other words, it's a solution to the differential equation. Now, the claim is this gives us exactly the same function. But maybe we should check a little bit just to compare. So if you're not quite sure about this, why don't you try writing it out? So we're going to expand the exponent, and you get that expression. And you can work out e to the 3 point times 0.872 and 2.9 and multiply those together. You'll get 39.7. And indeed, this formula is the same as the original, and we have just a different expression for the same function.